It's time for some motivation. Yes, so Gabriel Balogun is right here. And today we are talking about making learning a part of your life. Earlier on today uh, on the couch, some of the hosts and I agree that, hey, it's uh, interesting for children to learn through play, uh, as play can also contribute to their learning process. Yes, you're an adult, but learning should become part of your life. He's dedicated uh, his life to being an advocate for transforming learning and development into a strategic business driver, leveraging a powerful combination of strategy, technology, people, and content. It's great to have you in the building, Gabriel. Thank you very much. All right, so you came to give us today. I was expecting <laughs> the suit and tie. But you didn't give us that today. Nah. Mm, so what's the motivation behind this look? <laughs> I, I think that I, I just wanted to um, not necessarily tone it down a bit, mm. but I wanted to appear a bit different than the usual mm. um, student. I, I mean, I'm a style advisor, so right. my ability to play around different okay. looks. Okay, well, it's working. <laughs> and of course, you said making learning part of your life yes. uh, is important. Now, you've learned what motivates you sometimes you said earlier today that you woke up today and you didn't feel like putting on a suit, yes. but it didn't, it didn't feel right to put on the suit, right? Because mm -hmm. you've learned that about yourself. Mm -hmm. It feels like people need to start learning more about themselves yeah. little by little. Talk to us. Yeah, I think that um, the biggest gift you can have is self-awareness. Mm. Your ability to know what, what, what turns you on, what makes you, um, and I mean turn you on, not sexually, okay. but what turns you on, activates your energy. Mm. Um, there's a concept um, of, and it's pretty interesting that you brought up the whole clothing thing. There's a concept called included cognition, okay. which means that it basically is a psychological effect a specific piece of clothing has on your mood. Okay. So there are certain people that would not do certain things except they dress a certain way because it cheers them up. Yeah. And that comes from self-awareness. Mm. So I think the first thing you need to settle is who am I? What, mm. what makes me tick? What do I like to do? What do I not like to do? Yes. And once you can identify that, you consistently will now begin to figure out, okay, should I learn more about this or should I not learn this? So there was something else we discussed earlier about learning not just being about the classroom. Mm -hmm. There are other places you can learn. Uh, I feel like as a, as a culture or as a people, we've sort of just restricted learning to a classroom or, or a Zoom meeting at this <laughs> point because a lot of people are learning online, online yeah. courses. Uh, so when you say learning, what are you making reference to? So when I say making learning a part of your life, what I'm, what I'm saying is you need to... Um, Figure out how you like to learn. Okay. Um, I like to call it your learning toolbox. Some people have turned their... Some people like to drive... For, for instance, I like to drive alone. Why? Because my car is my library. Okay. I plug in a podcast. Mm. I'm going on a two-hour drive, but I'm learning. Mm. I don't have to sit in front of <laughs> a Zoom. I don't have to be in a Zoom meeting to learn. You understand? Um, other people learn... Um, there's this type of learning called kinesthetic where you learn with activity. Okay. So you learn how to be a better runner by running. Okay. You learn how to be a better tailor by staying on the machine. Okay. So you have to, that's why I say it begins with self-awareness. You have to discover how do I like to learn and then create like a learning toolbox that says, okay, for conceptual learning, I will do podcast and YouTube videos mm -hmm. for developmental, um, attitudinal trainings, I would rather just take a coach or a mentor okay. that can shape my mindset. Mm. And once you discover what works for you, you just keep, it's just like an engineer that has spanners, screwdrivers, so you just create your learning toolbox and go to it every time you need to learn something. It does feel like our environment is a little bit limiting in some areas. Mm. Uh, for instance, um, some of the things you've made reference to now involve the internet. If, yes. for instance, the cost of data is a limitation, yes. people might be discouraged, even though that is the best way they learn. Mm -hmm. um, now, finding a mentor, being able to shadow someone mm. in a particular field also takes time, money, and energy yes. uh, to try and track this person down, to mm. approach this person. So it does feel like the environment is a little bit limiting. Mm. Uh, when people consider those limitations, it sort of makes them draw back from this issue of 
learning. You know what I've learned enough. <laughs> uh, so this brings me to my next uh, question. Mm -hmm. What age do you think learning um, should stop? I, I don't think learning ever stops. Okay. Um, there's this popular musician, I think his name is Mozart. Okay. Mozart started learning music at age three. Mm. He wrote his first composition at five. five yeah. That's, that's how, how magnificent the brain is. And doctors even say that your baby begin to understand your voice from when they're in, mm. in the mother's womb. So it means that all through your life you're learning and sometimes we are learning subconsciously where you actually pick up things. So have you ever had maybe a mom or a senior sister that you spend so much time with and then you realize that you're on your own and you're doing the things they do and you're wondering, I just caught myself doing what my mom does and I actually don't like it. So, so I think that there is no time to stop learning. You have to consciously, the mistake people make is that they don't intentionally do it. So I usually say identify what you want to learn. I'm a big fan of identifying things. Okay. Identify what you want to learn. Create a to-learn list, okay. not necessarily a to-do list. To-learn list. Create a to-learn list mm. and then block time to do it. So this month, I want to learn how to be a better conversationalist. I'm going to listen to this podcast and this video. I'm basically just going to start talking to people. Mm. Start listening, start knowing what right questions to ask so that I can become a better conversationalist. And so that's intentionality. I wanted to just touch as quickly as possible on the people that have learned certain habits, mm -hmm. bad habits, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, and are trying to unlearn them. Mm -hmm. So is unlearning also learning? Yes, it is. Um, there is a psychological phenomenon called neuroplasticity, which means that your brain... The way, and if you see the picture of a brain, it looks like there are pathways in it. Yeah. So what that means is that every time you do something consistently, there are pathways. Okay. And to stop a behavior is to learn a new behavior. You don't stop a behavior by stopping. You have to use another behavior to replace it. Oh. So if you smoke, to stop smoking, yeah. look for something healthier that can take or give you the same ginger that smoking does. And, mm -hmm. and that's how you stop smoking. You know what, Gabriel, it's always a pleasure having you <laughs> on the show. We've had Thank a fantastic you. month with you. And Glad. if you missed any of those clips, please visit our YouTube channel. That's TVC Entertainment. Mm -hmm. That's what you look for on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, past episodes, you'll be able to see and hear what Gabriel had to say. Thank you so much. For Thank you for having me again. So glad. All right. We would also, as always, love to hear your thoughts and opinions on exactly what you've heard. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. Let's hear what you think. I can't wait. We're going to be taking a quick break, but there's still quite a bit more coming your way right here on Wake Up Nigeria. <laughs>